Centuries ago, the kingdom that made up much of modern day Laos was called Lan San. In English, land of a million elephants. Today, only a tiny fraction survive. Conservation groups estimate there are fewer than 800 elephants left in the country, less than 400 in the wild and 400 in captivity. Established in 2010, the Sayaburi Elephant Conservation Centre is Laos's only true conservation park. Biologist Annabel Lopez Perez and a small team of conservationists at the centre are trying to rehabilitate the elephant population in Laos. With a nursery, hospital and laboratory on site, Annabel is in charge of the breeding program while the elephants are free to roam the lush mountain forests and watering holes. Today, while in Sayaburi, we show you some of the amazing work that these people are doing at Laos's only elephant conservation centre. How many other parks in Lao have the same setup as you guys, you know, with that intention of re-release? No one. <laughs> this is it. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that they take seriously? I mean, that they speak maybe a lot, but that they, they do actually put some actions? Because yeah, you do see, you know, parks advertised as conservation parks and that, but... Mm. Well, I'd, I'd say that, you know, uh, the way conservation is very easy to maybe to throw it around uh, about a, a bunch of stuff uh, and I would say that just because you do something that is good doesn't necessarily mean uh, it's conservation conservation to me is this uh, you know the survival of the species yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you can treat these individual elephants that you've got very very well and that's a great thing to do but it, it ends with that elephant you know yeah, yeah. Um, so that's what, what I would call welfare and there's a lot of great welfare camps in Laos, and, and the standard is improving a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and and I think that will that trend will continue. You know, the elephants will get looked after better and better in, in Laos in these welfare camps. Um, but yeah, conservation is a strong word. You know, and and it's for I think it's you know it should be used for people uh, really pushing to for the survival of the species in in general, and not just looking after individual elephants. So for me, that is uh, the conservation of the habitat and the, uh, the, the elephants that live in it. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, looking at ways maybe to reintroduce other elephants back into, into forests. Good morning, guys. We are on our way to the UCC, the Elephant Conservation Centre now and meet up with Mike and Annabelle there and they're going to let us know what they actually do out here, what the goal is, what the objective is. So, uh, just following a guide out here now to into the jungle forest to find this place. How tranquil is this? Did not expect to see this big uh, lake out here. For those wanting to come out here, you are actually transported by boat here and that is part of the cost in staying at this conservation park. Um, everything you need is out here. Uh, bungalows, a big family uh, accommodation, restaurant, all your food is included in the price. Wow, imagine waking up to this in the morning. There's like meeting rooms and um, 
dormitories for trainees and that here restaurant there this is mike guys he's going to be showing us around today Hi, Evan. good, good to, to see you, see you dude yeah. he's a liverpudlian so <laughs> what is your role yeah so i'm the conservation project manager uh which i guess means i will have the the conservation projects the ecc runs mm -hmm. um mainly outside of our concession that you'll see today and most right. of it in nampui national protected area okay. in the south of sayaburi province yeah uh, where we still have the second largest uh, wild elephant population left in Laos. Yeah. Uh, of about 40, 40, 50 individuals. Um, so I work with the with the NPA office, the National Protected Area office, mm -hmm. um, to run some ranger teams, one specifically for wild elephants and one for a totally pro prohibited zone inside the protected area where you still have significant biodiversity. Um, so we have one team dedicated to protecting the wild elephants and one team dedicated to protecting the, the most significant parts of Nampui uh, National Protected Area. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. yeah, and then I also run our uh, release program as well. So we have a release program, a soft release of some captive elephants that we released into Nampui National Protected Area, uh, which has been running for three years now. Yeah. Uh, and we just have released these elephants and we have the mahouts go to track them a couple of times a week. Yeah. Uh, and we're just sort of collecting data on, you know, what would a release look like in Lao, if it's possible. You know? Right, okay. Um, so yeah. In its current state, we've put GPS collars on the, on on each individual, the four individuals. So you can track them. Yeah, so yeah. we can track them, and we get more consistent data. Right. Um, so every hour, I get a waypoint of where they are, um, as opposed to just you know three a week from the mahouts when they find them. Right. Um, okay. So yeah, uh, we're working together. Do, with do the they venture far from where you've released them from? Yeah. Do do they cover much distance, or they generally hang around in in the vicinity? Um, we cover roughly about eighteen thousand hectares. In, which is, you know, a relatively big space, but it's not that big for a group of elephants, you know. Okay. Uh, 18,000 hectares. Uh, Put that in pers perspective, uh, all of our concession here, which is where you can see around there. Yeah. Uh, to the bottom, you can't see them because it's a bit foggy, those mountains over, over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. This is 500 hectares. 500. <laughs> so they cover a big space okay. compared to here. Uh, but yeah, for Nampui, it's still just a relatively small part. Because Nampui okay. National Protected Area is 192,000 hectares. Wow. So they cover, you know, just yeah, on, just under 10%. Yeah. How long you been doing this? How long you been in Laos? I've been here for five years. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Loving it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a very easy place to get used to. So what is the best way for people to get in contact with you guys if they'd like to come out here and stay, visit? Um, yeah, I guess just on our, on our website. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Elephant Conservation Centre. All information for these guys I will whack in the descri description below um, and any other relevant information, email, things like that. Uh, this is our treatment area. Okay. And where elephants come just for health checks. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah maybe uh, can. Uh, our vet can probably talk a bit more about that. But yeah, it's just like different, you know, tools to make sure the elephants are used to coming to ho the hospital in case there is ever a need for them to come yeah it's not yeah foreign to them yeah yeah um and yeah obviously just to keep so each elephant is regularly checked. yeah they come down regularly so it's part yeah. of their routine so right. that if there is ever uh, you know something that they need to be treated for that they're used to coming here it's not foreign to them and they're not scared by it and they don't resist it you know okay uh, yeah so yeah and then obviously just to keep people safe too because they can be uh, yeah they're pretty strong Okay, so you weight by measurement. Yeah. So all the all the other things we have here, they they go through this. I think every week. Okay. Um, just so we have consistent data on if, if there's a fluctuation in the, oh, the yeah. weight. Uh, if there's anything that we need to, you know, look at. Yeah. Uh, because of that, if, 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 okay. there's, if there's any patterns we need to, uh, we can see. What would an animal like this weigh? Well, about, yeah, two and a half tons. Oh, 
When you're there, two and a half tons, having a 55 kilo yeah, guy on, your, yeah. on, on your neck like that, that is that, really that, not a problem. That, yeah. uh, you know, and it's completely different to, to carrying several people around further down in, in a, the back. In a big wooden basket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down here, I, I think as, a pair, as opposed to on the neck. I think that's what a lot of people have more of a problem with, you yeah, know, seeing, yeah. seeing these half a house things on their back and then a family sitting inside of that. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, because the Mahouts have been doing this for a thousand years, haven't they? You yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. And right on the neck there, that's a very the, the strongest part. Well, you're sitting of, of straight above their front front yeah. legs, so. Um, so yeah. See, right there on the neck, because it's got to carry the weight of its own head. Yeah. Um, so that's the strongest part. Yeah, right there. So that was it, he's come down to be weighed mm -hmm. and he's back off up into the forest. Measure higher and how the size and then we can calculate the body weight. Yeah, right. Then so we if there's calculate the dose of the medicine. Right, so if there's a severe drop in body weight that yeah. may indicate an illness or or worms and things like yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. Like that's about six months one time for deworming. Something yeah. Like that for them, that and can just because I, I was maybe speaking out of my element before to over over there. It's every week that they come and get checked. Uh, normally, weeks. one times a week for each elephant but, come for target training. Yeah, okay. for food care something like. That. Okay. Okay. But and for the body score will be every man, everybody. Okay. Check, okay. To okay. See, they're skinny. They're okay. Maybe yeah. We can check, but for the blood sample, we can take every week for the elephant, especially for breeding program. For Annabelle, yeah, like yeah. That. But for another elephant, if we see, we are asking Mahmoud every day, do they okay? If not okay, we can bring here to take the blood and send to Vientiane for check what happened with them exactly. Do they okay? Like a human. Yeah, yeah. Like that. Yeah. So this is like a normal, like a routine for them to. Right. Them. And how many elephants is there that you take care of? Oh, uh, in here twenty-eight now. Twenty-eight. Twenty. 20 22 here and then uh, in Tongi site as well, 8. Elephants. Okay. I do have okay, a question have about the order. hospital. How do you get them through the door? Uh, <laughs> this one is the hospital just for keep some store medications and everything. Right, so yeah. And when the visitors come in, they can see because we put some poster for some cases what happened that we can explain the situation right yeah that's yeah. before when there was logging or something like that okay so this is for the hospital we keep for visitors to come and for us we keep stock for medication and everything like that well like they've that. actually ah. got toes it's like a human if yeah. yeah 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 knee yeah the heel and just down here, this bathroom's out the back, is more of your family size um, house that you can come and stay in with the lake out there which comes around and the bungalows which are and restaurant which is up over here. And yes, yes, you can swim in that lake. Mike said when all this is over we can go for a swim if we wanted to. But I did not bring any shorts. Okay, this gives us a good idea of how big that is. So this is yeah. us here, this, this little area here is, is where we are now, this is our, uh, our little camp. Where, yeah. yeah. Um, we're going to walk just up here and our concession is just like a series of like hills like this. So it's one hill, two hill, three hill, four hill. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately we're going up and down <laughs> a couple of times, but we'll just go down here, up here down here and then we'll, we'll be over that here. area yeah okay yeah, this is where we'll be uh, but yeah this whole green area is our concession so that's the 500 hectares yeah 540 okay. hectares and the second camp the second what is camp that? Uh, it's not there anymore but okay. when we had guests just to sort of like spread the elephants out okay over the concession, yeah so they're not just in one there. area because if you've got my hutu uh, uh, everyone's sleeping here 
Yeah. It incentivized the foot the elephant a bit close, you know. Yeah. So we had another camp here so we could utilize all of this. Okay. We're just working out which students are going to carry Nini up the hill. So it's the steepest hill in the concession, and I have to walk it uh -huh. times a day just to flick the switch back on. So there is no town electricity here, it's just all. No, it's all, off the grid, so we have solar grid. panels, uh, yeah, and we have a generator. Okay. But uh, yeah, we have loads of guests, we put a generator on from six till nine for people to charge stuff. But apart from that, we're on our solar panels, which are on So the how side. often are you running up here to flick the switch back on? More than, <laughs> more more than, than you like. Here, yeah. <laughs> about five times a day. <laughs> so all this grass here we planted for the other thing, so just strategically across our concession. We plant uh, grasses, bananas, and other supplement food, mainly for the dry season, so now, you know. Um, but yeah, it's just not feasible to expect a natural forest to provide enough food for 20 elephants yeah, um, yeah. in such a small concession. So obviously we have to supplement that as, uh, in, in part. You know? we, we've had a relatively wet, dry season. Yeah. Does it yeah, grow thank this, God. <laughs> does it grow this well in normal times? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very strong. This grass. Okay. Um, yeah. We're moving away from bananas and, 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 and more to, to grasses. On, okay. under the, is what they're used to traditionally eating, is that right? Or? Well, I think it's just like, it doesn't matter what conditions they are, the grass will grow. Yep. The bananas are... Okay, eating. yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. I think just for, uh, you know, biomass produced per, per hectare, it's, it's a lot more efficient uh, okay, than the bananas. yeah. It's good to have bananas because they store a lot of water. Um, bananas store a lot of water, so you cut one and it's like you give them some food and drink at the same time, you know. Uh, but I'm talking about the banana, the amount yeah, of the shoot, not the not the fruit. Yeah, yeah. And, we'll take it. and what you're showing me today is uh, would be part of the um, the stay for anybody who does come out here and stay. Is it or the part we're going to see now, the males with Annabelle? No, not normally. Okay. Although that might change. Yeah. Um, because Annabelle is doing here. She started to do this just in 2019, so just as, just uh, as we before handled. COVID, yeah. Um, so maybe it would be part of the programme. It's a very interesting thing to see. I think it's a good part of the programme um, to, to show to guests. Yeah, um, I'm sure there'd be a lot of people who'd like to get out here in, in yeah. the wild and uh, see them in the natural yeah, habitat like that. And that's sort of like the ethos of the, the, the centre, is that, uh, and that's why our programme can change so fluidly, it's like, this is what we're doing and you can come to see it. Yeah. We're not making a schedule for you for you know for the guest. Yeah. It's like this is what we're doing regardless yeah. as if there's people here or not. Yeah. So if you'd like to come and see it, we're come happy watch. to have you, you know. Yeah. So there are no wild elephants in this area that no. in this centre, it's just all elephants part of the program. Yeah. So if you had the wild elephants here, you'd be at the airport in half an hour. Yeah. You know? <laughs> You can feel like you're really in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. But you're 20 minutes from the middle of Sayabuddy town. Yeah, yeah. So, and before you get to the town, there's a bunch of uh, plantations. So if the people in the plantations didn't kill them, uh, the people in the village would. I, I just wanted to know because I don't think I'd be able to run at the moment if, they were, <laughs> <laughs> if we confronted any yeah. dead. <laughs> uh, you'd, be, you'd be surprised. Uh, yeah. I've been chased by wild elephants in the in Nampui National Protected Area. Okay. And yeah, you feel like you're knackered. What's the best thing to do? Look, hot, a big tree or? Yeah, I mean, so the Mahuto give me a bunch of protocols of what to do. Yeah. But before I can even think of it, I've just ran. <laughs> you know? Yeah. They, uh, they've said to me before, even our release elephants have charged us before. And they say, don't run, you've got to stay there. You've got to stay there, otherwise they will chase you. No. If you stay there, they won't do anything. But I'm like, okay, you you, you stay yeah, there. <laughs> yeah. I'll meet you back at the camp. Yeah, you, you're um, not giving them. Yeah, it could, well, I guess they know their elephants very well. Yeah. And so yeah. then they're like, oh, you're bluffing. But I'm, <laughs> I'm not willing yeah. to oh, take that. Oh, no, the size of them, them man. <laughs> so, yeah, I've never stood my ground so far. We'll see in the coming years. But I'm off. Always, <laughs> but I will ask you, other than the elephants... And the and the few well the snakes that you see, much other wildlife in this area here. Yeah, uh, we have just like wild pigs, some civet cats. Yeah, yeah, the, um, the co yeah. cat poot coffee cats. Yeah, a couple of different types of uh, like squirrels and tree shrews and stuff. Yeah, like this. yeah, quite a nice variety of birds. Uh, and apart from that, I think of bears, did you say? Birds, 
Beds. Beds. Yeah. What's a bed? A, a bird. A bird. <laughs> ah, uh, uh, There's the first one of the day, uh, man. That's uh, the uh, accent yeah. that got, that got me. Uh, What's a bed? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mike's just gone back to check on um, the students and Nene. Nene was walking with them. I would not be surprised if Nene's gone back to where that bridge was, where we're going to be eating lunch. Uh, probably a good idea if she does. Look at me. I'm soaking. Stinking bloody hot out here. And it's only early. It's probably early 10 o'clock. But Annabelle comes out here every day to spend time with the elephants. Yeah, Nene's pulled the pin. She's going to be waiting for us back at the lunchroom. Just way too much energy, dude. Way too much energy. <laughs> You're going to regret that. Yeah. You? <laughs> How are you travelling, Mon? Good. Moi. Just take a rest over there. Oh, we can't okay. Okay. There are some insects oh. inside. Did you eat? No. Uh, normally they have some. Uh, oh, but you know. Oh. It, it eats insects, does it? Yeah. It, it eats it, inside. Smell attracts insects. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, insect like uh, it's it's high like this, but for a lot of people we eat it. Oh, we, okay. take, we take and we make like a, a fry or okay or make a dimping. <laughs> you guys will eat anything, man. Huh? You guys will eat anything. You're quite kidney, boy. Is that a gold? Is that a gold top? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. There's a gold top. กินได้แต่ว่าเมาอ๋อครับถ้าเมาเมามันมันมันมันเป็นพิษใจอยากลงครับพี่ใจอยากลงครับครับเจ้ากินนี่กินอะไรอยากลงอยากลงลงลงล
how to be a male. So sometimes they don't know how to breed. They don't know how to take care of the female. They don't know how to, if they see other males, maybe they fight very strong. They, they hurt each other. So what we try to do here is to give the chance to male elephant to spend time with other males to learn. And here they are free, they're poi, they are not attached. So they can choose if they would like to be alone, if they would like to be with a friend, if they would like to eat. So by letting them the choice, um, then they, I think they, they improve their health because they choose what they want to do. So you see here we have one male, he decide, okay, I want to eat a little bit, have a bath, but not too far from them. They are not fighting, right? They are not kill each other. These two, this one is a young male. Uh, it's around 20, 22. This Jumban is in 30, 30 year old. You see, so they are together and all the elephant, they teach young elephant, okay? This is food, this is how we fight, you know? Not too strong, be careful. So, as you can see, there are three males, three, and the main choice is not to fight, right? It's just to survive, survive. They eat some food, they rest. They were, you know, touching each other a little bit, like, how are you, <laughs> right? So this is very important because um, it's important to show this to Patet Lao and also to other countries like Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, to show that it is important to let males be with other males, like we do female, we put with other females, right? We know this, so with males the same. So this is the first time somebody does this in Laos and also uh, in many other countries in Asia. So, so my job is to collect the behavior, the Nisae, right? And then I put in the computer and I see how percent the elephant fight, how many percent the elephants they were by by with each other and how many percent they were alone and most of the time they were with a friend so the data prove that for them it's very important to have a friend like like people like Lakun Lao right <laughs> so this is why 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 you see here and um, sometimes we put three elephants sometimes we put seven males together but we never have a situation where the elephants fight to kill each other, never. If they don't like each other, they don't want to hurt each other. So, that's it. I think you can be very proud of the Mahuts of Laos, that they are very brave to do this for the first time, because the beginning, they are not that they are very brave to do this for the first time, because at the beginning, they were afraid. Oh, maybe the, my elephant will kill other elephant. How are we going to do, right? But they were brave, and they, they were willing to improve. And this is the... <laughs> Gee, she's big. Is she the biggest female you have? No, we have another one. It's Mekun Chu. It's in Tomisai. Okay. The protected area. She's almost four tons. Three tons and something. Okay. How old is she? How old is her? Yeah. This one or the big one? The one on the left, the big one. Oh, it's uh, in 28. Okay. And she's what you would call a good, healthy weight. She looks very yeah, she solid. Healthy, yeah. yeah. Not sagging, no ribs. No. This one is bony because it's very old. It's okay. like my grandma. Okay. You see elephants when they get... Uh, Just like people. people. Yeah. yeah. They don't have good quality of teeth. So it's more difficult for them to take nutrients and it's okay. part of the process. They consume themselves when they get old. How so they're in good health. But How old is grandma? Uh, we, I think it's in her 60s, 50 plus, 60. Okay, yeah, yeah, wouldn't be sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All the elephants in this park, they were captive animals. Is the goal to actually research and rehabilitation with the goal to release back into the wild at some stage? 
Yeah. Yeah. So, so the main goal of the center is first to, you know, bring these elephants that they were working and uh, try to reconvert yeah, them into, you know, like uh, try to um, integrate them in social groups. Yeah. See what elephants can be, you know, be wild. So, like, so we just need to um, first check their health, later introduce them in different social groups, observe their behavior. And by doing that, we target what elephants can potentially be able to be reintroduced. Re reintroduced, and they have a behavior very similar to those in the wild. They are not very humanized. They are not looking for human interaction, human food, right? And when we have a big picture of each individual and each group, then we can select what will be the best individuals to be reintroduced. So that is part of what you are doing here now, viewing these animals to see. Exactly. This is our main goal is try to first to provide better welfare for them and by doing that target what individuals could be potentially be part of the okay. and the ones that they cannot or you know health conditions or behavior wise um, they can continue to be here so we can learn from them yeah, the more we learn from them the more we can help and apply this knowledge to the wild population right yeah so they will always contribute in conservation in one way or another how do you acquire these animals? Yeah, from the mahouts and that. Yeah, you know, uh, do you buy them? Yeah, we have. You, to. You go, are there people travelling looking for these animals, or do the people come to you with them? Or we have a bit of everything, but you know, in Laos, because um, they were all like working elephants, logging yes. and things like that. So yeah. So the captive population, for everybody to understand, in. in Laos is like a livestock. So you have an elephant, you own an elephant, like you will own a chicken or a cow or a buffalo. Mm -hmm. So of course it, it's, it's an investment for the family. It's a, like a money, you know, in an elephant uh, mm -hmm. shape. So some people can contact us, oh, I don't, I cannot take care of my elephant. Uh, do you want it? But then you will, we will have to buy it from them. Yeah. So then we will become the owners of this animal. And then we, we will have the rights to do what we want. We can also rent in them. So in Mahouts, they say, well, I don't want to sell it, but I want to improve, you know, their living condition or I cannot take care. I can bring them to the center and then uh, I will have an income just by renting okay. to you. Yeah. This is another option. And some option is like the government confiscate them from, but it had to be the government who say, oh, these elephants are part of an illegal trade or whatever. We will block this, uh, then we will take it and bring it to you. But we cannot confiscate no. from private owners. It yeah. has to be government of uh, uh, government organizations who do that. Okay. So these are the three. Ways. But again, it's it's very hard for everybody to understand because they're wildlife. But because they were born in captivity, even though they're wild elephants, mm -hmm. you had to treat them like livestock. Yeah. So it make everything very complicated because they are under different laws from the wildlife, uh, el for, for the wild elephants, actually. And I will probably just add to that, that if you do rent uh, an elephant, you can't really yeah. plan long term. Yeah, so you can't plan you to can't say, reintroduce okay, it to the wild. Is reintroduce this animal, or we're going to do this with it over five years or ten years or something like this, because the, the rental can stop whenever the, the owner wants it to. Yeah. So if you, if you really have long term plans, um, for, for elephants, you need to own them in well. Yeah. So they could be just renting it to you while they're doing it hard, and when things pick up for them, they could just ask for, for that elephant back? Yeah, exactly. um, so the, the, a, a lot of um, tourism around elephants is, is, is on a rental basis, because you want specific elephants, maybe babies, cute... Uh, you know, uh, okay, babies like a draw card. Yeah, uh, and then once the elephant is maybe not a, as, as appealing, yeah. you can stop the rental and rent another one. Um, so, so yeah, it, 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 it shows a lack of commitment if, if, if you're not going to yeah. buy. Yeah. And we could never say that the, we, we're doing the things we do if we don't own them. Uh, because you can't say, oh, we're going to release these ones, we're going to make these protocols, we're going to do this research. If we, don't, if we can't be 100% certain that these elephants are staying here, uh, yeah. you know, so you'd like the park to get into a position where they can actually own 
these these animals outright so you can plan long term for yeah. them so then we have all yeah. the rights to do yeah what we want and if we want to release it uh, we don't need to ask the permission or the agreement of the owner that yeah. sometimes they don't want to release them because they feel like what they will do and they think that they will lose the money that this elephant worth so then Sometimes they start the project and the owner has a different job with the elephant and then they think it's more attractive for the family and they just took, took them back. Yeah. Uh, so then, yeah, it will be very difficult to move forward if all the elephants were rented because you are at the mercy of how much the owners they would like to will in and cooperate. Well, if it were our elephant, the Mahouts, they work for the ECC. So this is the work we want to do. Yeah, they want to do it or not, but is it, we can we can push more into the direction we want. Yeah, the yeah, and then the hoots are here yeah. earning a so salary. The only elephant we rent is the male for the yes, breeding. For the breeding, yeah. Okay, so there. So what percentage of the twenty-eight elephants you you have are rented? What, one. Just the one. Yeah, just the one. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. But saying that the owner of the male elephant who we rented, yeah. it is always very cooperative and this is why he's working for us with many years. He is very in, into the project so where does the funding come from for this program? So most of our income came from um, visitors. So everybody that come to visit the elephant, I mean the main contribution is to support the elephant with their stay. Um, so this is our main source of funding and this is why um, COVID uh, has been very hard for us and for our conservation efforts uh, since of course we didn't have any. So no any corporate visit. or government funding at all, it's mainly just 100% through the tourism industry, people yeah, coming here. industry and also about, uh, about private donors. Okay. That, uh, they support during uh, COVID or sometimes they donate to the center and also different organizations where we can write different uh, proposals, you know, for the research, for the release, and they can support specific projects through a uh, proposal. So this is where our funding comes from. Yeah, but mainly it comes from the visitors. Okay, okay. And if somebody wanted to help out, how would they get in touch with you? I'll I will put the links in the description box below, but is there a, a web page and... Yeah, so we have our Facebook page. This is uh, Elephant Conservation Center Laos. Uh, maybe it's easier if you put the link later. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. And also we have our website and there is a, a campaign going on that is called a Baby Baby Program. So it's just to support all the breeding and all the actions that we are doing here. Okay. So they can donate through this campaign or they can donate through the website. But the most um, satisfactory and enjoyable way they could help is um, come into the country and view them in their own natural habitat now. Yeah, I think it's a unique experience and I it's very sad to say, but maybe it will be very difficult to do this in the future, you know, if we yeah. continue to deforestate and destroy the forest. So you can see elephants in many places, but you cannot see elephants in the forest, in social groups, uh, in Just the wild, because it's very hard. So this is a, the most similar approach. Um, and it's nice to, to enjoy it. It's not only to see the elephant, it's also to understand what the elephants need. And elephants need a healthy forest. Yeah, yeah. So this is all about, you know, bring you here and not bring the Conservation and preservation. Yeah. So this is why people need to respect when they come here. It's not to have a direct interaction with the elephant. It's just to observe the work that we do here, the conservation work that has been done to protect the elephants. And, and you know, be part of that and enjoy to see the elephants being elephants. It's, yeah. It just... About them, that's know. the most important thing the elephants just being elephants. Yeah,
Okay, thank you very much, Anadol. You're welcome. That was an excellent tour. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. I hope you enjoy. Can I offer you some water or something? Can, may I refill your water? If you don't mind, yeah. that'll be cool. Thank you. Yeah, well, can I just come back for me? Okay, thank you. Oh, this is still Mike, it's not a twin brother or anything. Mate, I just want to thank you for all the help you've been no, today. No, I have learned so much and um, I hope this video can help help the place out, the ECC. Yeah, me too, man. Um, uh, yeah, always fun to yeah. uh, see your videos on YouTube and thanks a lot for coming. Thank you. Yeah, you're yeah. always welcome back. Come to this place and you will definitely see Mike and <laughs> Annabelle. Very helpful people. See you later. Great work, Mr. Mike. Thank you for bringing us out. Welcome, Lindy. I I told I told her already. I like I like to to explain about Sayabury. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You hear that? When you do come to Sayabury, come into the tourist information centre, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you will see you meet Mr. Mon, and uh, he will do anything within his power to uh, give you as much information as possible. Very helpful guy. Very funny guy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> speaks English very well. Thank they you. Know, they know, they know. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.